Welcome back dear friends. This is Lit E City, the YouTube channel dedicated to English literature. And today's our very interesting topic is about what we read when we read. Actually, this is uh, just another way to say about the concept popularized by the Bulgarian French uh, theorist Julia Kristeva and the con uh, the concept we are talking we are talking about is intertextuality it is a very interesting concept generally it is uh, taken into account in post structuralist theories but uh, you may be surprised to know that it is a very very old literary concept okay so let's talk about this very i should say interesting topic for which we can witness in all aspects of life so what is intertextuality our first question is what is basically intertextuality dear friends intertextuality as a literary device is actually exploration of interrelationship between texts when you are reading a text you basically if you are uh, working on intertextuality when you are reading a particular text you are also trying to locate the traces the signs the remains of other text in that particular text so in simple words hum keh sakte hain it refers to the direct or indirect presence of other texts in a text now dear friends uh, let me tell you very simply that by text we do not mean just वर्ड्स रिटर्न इन ऑन अ पेज यहाँ टेक्स्ट से हमारा मतलब है इट शुड बी इट शुड बी टेकन इन अ वाइडर कॉन्टेक्स एंड इट इंक्लूड ऑल वर्ड्स रिटर्न ऑन अ पेज ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ मीडिया इट इज टेक्स और फिल्म इज ऑल्सो अ टैक्स मिथ्स दे आर ऑल्सो टैक्स देन एडवर्टीजमेंट्स कल्चरल आर्टिफैक्ट्स एंड सो ऑन all these are texts and anything which have a meaning which can be interpreted this is a text or what is intertextuality intertextuality as you can see that a particular work has echoes has references has allusions has borrowings has influences from other texts and when we read that particular text we read all these older texts also this is basically intertextuality uh in to understand intertextuality uh let's take this famous example of movie inception it was a very popular movie uh, two five five six years ago and there are series of dreams with a dream there the plot it was a very you can say complex plot in which the protagonist hum jo log hote hain we are not able to exactly point out what is going on because the protagonist is always under a dream and sometimes there is a dream within a dream then there is a dream within a dream this poster also very beautifully express the theme of the movie and the viewers try to find out the meaning thinking about various levels of dreams beneath the surface what actually happens similarly jo ek text hota hai there is a text within a text and that text also has some connotation some traces of other text jo hum padhte hain when we are going through uh, a text we try to locate or sometimes there is no attempt they are, they are quite visible and that is dear friend is intellectuality intertextuality sorry now uh, intertextuality though currently it is associated with post structuralist theories but as a concept it is as old as the history of literary criticism in fact in plato and aristotle we can find uh, the issue of intertextuality when they say about the influence and presence of other elements in a particular text even if we talk about the famous concept of mimesis or imitation given by uh, and uh, elaborated by plato and uh, aristotle they are even in that concept hinting at the presence of something else in a text imitation when you are imitating something so obviously it is nothing we can say original or we can say something very unique 
you are even if we talk about their example of imitation that uh, an artist whether it is a painter or a writer they imitate nature so in this case nature becomes a text and writer and painter when they try to imitate nature whether it is uh, we can say nature outside or human nature they are giving their text a shade of that meaning as a term intertextuality it was first used by julia kristeva in her essays on word dialogue and novel and then in the bounded text these two are the collections of uh, collections of essays by julia kristeva and it is in these particular uh, co collection of essays that she uh, frequently used this term intertextuality uh, julia kristeva if we talk about her she is a leading bulgarian born french psychoanalyst critic novelist uh, there is we can say she is a very radical and innovative uh, philosopher she is best known for her writings in structuralist linguistics psychoanalyst uh, psychoanalysis semiotics and philosophical feminism uh, she is also is associated with these new schools and uh, very close as she has worked a great deal on bakhtin and uh, she has translated she has introduced bakhtin to the french world in her seminal essay on bakhtin word dialogue and novel she writes about intertextuality the literary world is an intersection so you can understand it is an intersection of textual surfaces rather than a point point we mean to say a fixed meaning as a dialogue among several writings you may remember bakhtin concepts of heteroglossia so she is basically carrying this particular meaning uh, further by saying that a text a word is basically not some of uh, not a fixed meaning it is not a lamp post it is rather a uh, intersection she further states uh, each word is an intersection of other words where at least so it means at least there can be more than one other word can be read so what she means to say we can always find the trace of at least one other text in a text jab bhi aap koi text pad rahe hote hain then it is not the only text you are reading you are reading so many other texts that are sometimes implicit sometimes hidden sometimes uh, very much uh, we can say on the page sometimes there are we can say very slight references and sometimes direct allusions so no text is individually uh, we can say stand out or have a fixed meaning it is basically a crossing uh, where many other texts meet to generate a particular meaning now in approaches like new criticism what does a critic do he focuses on plot character and device and his main purpose the main purpose of the critic is to locate one ultimate meaning of the text so this is the traditional approach where we try to find one final meaning keval ek hi iska meaning ho sakta hai but rejecting this new critical principle of textual autonomy ye term aap logon ne suna hoga when you have discussed about new criticism each text is autonomous or each text govern its meaning but the theory of intertextuality insists that a text is a dynamic side there is always so much going on uh, the meaning is constantly fluctuating state ke andar hota hai it cannot exist as a self sufficient or a closed system or in other words we can say a text is basically an open system 
यही का यही हमारे को रोल एंड बार्टेज ने द डेथ ऑफ द ऑथर के अंदर या प्लेजर ऑफ द टेक्स्ट के अंदर ही हैज़ डिस्कस्ड अबाउट दीज थिंग्स दैट यू कैन एंटर यू कैन एग्जिट फ्रॉम एनी टेक्स्ट एंड यू कैन क्रिएट योर ओन मीनिंग रीडर इज हु डिसाइड्स द मीनिंग ऑफ अ टेक्स्ट वी कैन से डिफरेंट पोस्ट स्ट्रक्चरलिस्ट अप्रोचेज लाइक डीकंस्ट्रक्शन न्यू हिस्टोरिसम पोस्ट कलोनियल फैमिनिस्ट दे ट्राई टू डिस्कवर न्यूमरस शेड्स ऑफ मीनिंग हेयर डियर फ्रेंड्स यू मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दैट इंटर टेक्सुअलिटी इज नथिंग लाइक अ स्कूल ऑफ थाट इट इज बेसिकली एन अप्रोच सो अगर डीकंस्ट्रक्शन की बात करें इट डज द सेम थिंग इट ट्राइज टू फाइंड आउट ट्रेसेज न्यू हिस्टोरिसम की बात करें इट ट्राइज टू रीड हिस्ट्री इन द टेक्स पोस्ट कलोनियल वंस अगेन फेमिनिस्ट दे ऑल एंड लुक एट दिस पर्टिकुलर फ्रेज आई हैव यूज न्यूमरस शेड्स ऑफ मीनिंग इवन यू कैन लुक एट दिस पर्टिकुलर डायग्राम दिस इज यू नो बुक कवर ऑफ फेमस बुक फिफ्टी शेड्स ऑफ ग्रे रिटर्न बाय ई एल जेम्स आई हैव चेंज इट टू फिफ्टी शेड्स ऑफ मीनिंग एंड इंस्टीड ऑफ राइटर आई हैव रिटर्न इंटर टेक्चुअलिटी दिस इट सेल्फ इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ इंटर टेक्चुअलिटी वेन यू सी दिस पर्टिकुलर बुक कवर यू आर एबल टू ट्रेस द साइन ऑफ अदर बुक फिफ्टी शेड्स ऑफ ग्रे सो दिस इज वन एग्जाम्पल लाइव एग्जाम्पल ऑफ इंटर टेक्चुअलिटी वेयर आईदर देयर इज सम वी कैन से सम काइंड ऑफ एल्यूजन और रेफरेंस Now, dear friends, uh, Kristeva is indebted to Bakhtin's theory about language. Why? Because Bakhtin's theory about unity in language is impossible. There, it is just an illusion. Literary authors may try to erase languages of others' intention. उनका कोशिश रहता है जिसको हेरॉल प्रू में एनजाइटी ऑफ इन्फ्लुएंस कहता है दैट दे वॉन्ट टू अपीयर न्यू एंड ओरिजिनल बट दिस दिस ही कॉल्स मोनोलॉजिज्म और पोइट्री वेयर द पॉइट और द वेयर द राइटर ट्राइज टू पॉइंट आउट दैट द राइटर इज टोटली ओरिजिनल ही हैज और शी हैज नॉट बॉरोड एनी थिंग फ्रॉम पास बट ऑन दी अदर हैंड देयर आर राइटर्स who have artistically elaborated and intensified heteroglossia and what he calls dialogic novel in which there are various voices speaking he has given famous example of tolstoy versus dostoevsky tolstoy he says is monologist while dostoevsky in his novel has uh, created a dialogic novel and actually in late 1960s kristeva subscribed to the very famous french magazine telque uh, and uh, its notion of textual revolution she saw bakhtin's concept of dialogism as quintessentially dynamic and revolutionary now uh, basically so we can understand that every writer both before writing his text and during the writing process he, the writer is also a reader of text written before his text now the writer can either borrow from the prior or concurrent text and discourses in the network what are the devices it can be an allusion impressions references citations quotations and connection the he can or she can either borrow from uh, uh, with these techniques or even if it is not borrowing he or she may be affected by other texts now uh, an author's work therefore will always have echoes and traces of the other texts to which it refers either directly or indirectly so we can say uh, what kristeva says that any text is constructed as a mosaic of quotation any text is the absorption and transformation of another you can see like a mosaic there is nothing like we can say original there are traces there are faces there are impressions there are references to numerous other texts 
A very interesting uh, section of this video is types of intertextuality which will clear your concept more. Uh, uh, the first type of intertextuality is appropriation. Uh, we have discussed already appropriation as a post-colonial term but uh, uh, with uh, this particular point of view what is appropriation? It is an act of taking some foreign idea or style and uh, make it for own use. A writer while writing a text intentionally or unknowingly appropriates. It may be intentionally or it may be unknowingly many earlier texts in different way. So what can be different ways of uh, appropriation? Uh, the writer can adapt a text with a different context or different media. He may or she may directly borrow from some text or it may be revision or reinterpretation of a text. So if we talk about adaptation, there are so many, uh, you can say, critical discourses regarding it. Uh, for example, let's start from Elizabethan giant Shakespeare. Uh, there was earlier Hollinshed's history, uh, Chronicles of England, Scotland and Ireland. From these story, Shakespeare took some plots and converted them into his great tragedy like Macbeth, uh, a play written by him. Then in 20th century, uh, uh, even in the early, uh, we can say 20th century and up to the now, there have, these plays have been based uh, to made into, transformed into movie, like this famous example of Roman Polanski's uh, Macbeth. It doesn't stop here. Now an Indian director decides to adapt it in Indian setting and he makes it Makbul, another something based on uh, we can say Macbeth's play. Now when you see Makbul, you must be uh, seeing also how Polanski treated the theme of uh, Macbeth. When you are seeing this, you may also remember three which is how Macbeth has, uh, Shakespeare has used them. You may also remember if you are a scholar about Hollinshed's treatment of history, about superstitions and written things written about them in on Elizabethan stage. So one particular text and uh, side by side there are so many we can say revenge tragedies uh, which were written prior to Macbeth which comes into the mind of a scholar. Another example, classic example is of Pride and Prejudice written by the famous uh, writer Jane Austen. It is basically a novel. Uh, while reading the novel, we can also trace many elements uh, starting from Fanny Burney up to Elizabeth Gaskell. Then we have movies like uh, Pride and Prejudice. Then we have reworkings to a different setting like Bride and Prejudice where we are not only seeing uh, the impressions of Pride and Prejudice but we are also seeing the impression of Indian culture, Indian matrimonial scene. All these things are interwoven with each other. That is why it becomes, uh, we can say, a uh, uh, crossing uh, intersection of different texts. Uh, here it will be it will be very beneficial to talk about very relevant and uh, popular uh, the Avenger series. Actually, it was Norse myth which be, which became the base of uh, many heroes of this Avengers uh, universe, universe of superheroes. Uh, we have uh, Loki, we have Thor uh, taken from Norse myths. Then initially they were reworked in comics where there were some real superheroes. But all in all these superheroes you can also read about earlier superheroes and then we have Avengers. Later it was changed into a movie series starting uh, with all these superheroes. Yes, it is sort of adaptation, but still there were once again traces and signs of many other superheroes movies. In fact, there is a direct conflict between Marvel comics and DC comics. There is a complete one to one match of superheroes and later looking at the popularity, it was changed into animation target at the uh, kids. Once again, the uh, story changes, the character has some slight changes, but we can see traces of other animation uh, into these series. Another type of we can say uh, intertextuality is use of allusion. 
And actually, allusion is the simplest form of intertextuality because a writer makes direct reference to some other text. It is, we can say, either quoted or unquoted, it is a direct reference. Uh, the essays of Bacon, they are, we can say, the greatest example of text interspersed with a variety of allusion, whether it is uh, Roman or Latin classics, Seneca, whether it is, we can say, contemporary sciences or other things, Bacon is never shy of making allusion. We can also point out appeal of Dern's poetry at that time. It was considered to be very difficult. It was termed metaphysical because there were exotic allusions. And then we have in modern times in 20th century, the wasteland. Once again, T.S. Eliot has made use of numerous uh, allusions, direct or indirect. He has even uh, alluded from French poetry, Indian Upanishads. That is why it becomes, we can say, uh, basically a millage of uh, quotations and you cannot read Wasteland without reading or without seeing the traces of all these allusions. Uh, there is very, you know, I will say a very good example of this particular novel, The Legend of Bagger Wings. Bagger Wings, Bhagwan, 1995, it was written by um, uh, Stephen Pressfield and look at the set of characters. There is the warrior or hero Arjuna. In the novel, it is named Arjuna and he refuses to fight. Just like in Mahabharat, Arjuna refuses to fight at the 11th hour. The god Krishna appears as Bhagwan, Bhagavan, to help Arjuna follow the path of warrior. There is direct, we can say, allusion, which, but for allusion to work, it is necessary that reader also share the context. Parody, it is another type of intertextuality. It is an intentional rewriting of a text, revision of a text in a funny and humorous way. Parodies have always been an important part of subculture. Now, uh, to be uh, to use the classical example of Don Quixote or Don Quixote written by Cervantes. This is greatest example, most from famous example of a parody in which uh, he parodies uh, the genre of, uh, we can say, chivalry or uh, heroic uh, uh, valor. All these are made fun of later. It itself was uh, adapted, reused, reworked. So it's a great chain. Similarly, a very recent example, we have already seen Pride and Prejudice, but there is this parody, Pride and Prejudice and zombies. It is, you can look at the writer Jane Austen and Say Graham Smith. So already uh, we can say a parody is working on then Harry Potter, uh, my, uh, Michelle Gerber has changed it to Barry Throtter. So every time one of work become very famous, a parody is bound to come. A very relevant example of parody is highly popular art of meme where a template, there is a fixed template, it is borrowed and is used in a comic way according to as there is a repetition. So if you have uh, seen this movie Django Unchained, uh, so this you can see this particular picture frame of Leonardo DiCaprio and this particular expression, it has been used so many times. Finally, 12th complete, you can see the uh, language, it is used in Hindi, it is used in regional languages, it is used in English, this another very popular frame, but these are something new. But when you are reading these things, you are also reading the earlier context of the movie and these things. So we can see in our daily life, intertextuality is everywhere. Science are walking hand in hand with other older science. What we need to look as when we read a text, we should read it carefully. That's all dear friends for today. I hope you enjoyed this class and now understand the concept of intertextuality. For more literary theory concept, keep watching Lit E City and keep supporting. Thank you dear friends.